my name is Danny and I work for St Albans Museums. As part of our Henry Moore exhibition, Drawing in the Dark, I'd like to encourage you to make some art at home using supplies you probably already own. Henry Moore was an abstract artist and that means that he used inspiration from the things that he saw around him to inform his art, but the art he created didn't look exactly like the thing that he was drawing. I'll show you some examples here. Look at the titles for each of these pieces and see how the sculptures suggest it. They imply what he's drawing, but they are not copies. They don't look like the title. This doesn't look like a mother and child, but you get that impression from it. Similarly, you can tell that this is a reclining person, but it doesn't look like a person. It just suggests it. This week, we're going to be doing some abstract art of our own. All you will need is a plain piece of paper, some coloured pens and a fine black pen to draw on your artwork at the end. You are also going to need your imagination because this artwork involves looking very closely at the colours and the world around you. Choose a favourite place in and around your home. Look at it really carefully. Are there three main colours that stand out to you as you look? I've chosen my garden and the three main colours that I can see for me are the orange of the wood, the blue of the sheds and the sunny sky and the green of the plants. So those are my three colours that I'm going to be using. Think about your space and draw some differently shaped blobs. There are no rules here, you can't get it wrong. Just keep in mind the space that you're drawing, look at your page and draw what you think looks right. I like to do a couple of blobs before swapping each colour rather than trying to do all one colour at once so that I can build up the picture as I go. There are no rules so it's very much about personal preference. What sorts of shapes does the space that you're thinking about or looking at invoke? I'm going for these sort of swirly soft patterns because for me the garden and time outside is very much about being relaxed and sort of soft shapes. Also there's something about leaves and plants around the shapes that I quite like, but really you can just do whatever feels good to you. If you get stuck or you can't really see where you think you ought to draw next, try turning your piece of paper around or swapping to a different colour. That might help you get some more inspiration. Try and colour as neatly as you can, but if you go outside the lines, that's fine. Just increase the shape of your blob or swirl so that it matches where you went over the lines accidentally. With this piece of green I'm doing here, I coloured it in and then decided actually I didn't like that very sharp pointy edge. So that's fine, I just went back and turned it into a curve. You don't have to fill your entire piece of paper. Leaving white spaces, or what an artist would call negative space, is also part of your, your process. Where do the white spaces look good? Where does it look like you just haven't finished your drawing yet? It all sort of depends on what you like and how it suits you. You'll notice how I did large uh, blobs and sections first and now I'm going in to do some smaller ones just to finish it all together. Once it's finished take your black fine liner, uh, a rollerball or a biro would do, and have a look at the space that you're drawing again. What are some common shapes that you can see? You could take inspiration from a wallpaper pattern or if you've got lots of square furniture you might want to do something with squares and rectangles. I'm doing an outside uh, drawing, so I'm using lots of different shapes of leaves in my painting. You can see that I've got some leaves that are very, very small and some leaves that are big. I've got three different shapes of leaves too. This is just what appealed to me, but you can't really get it wrong. Just draw some interesting shapes over the top of your artwork. If you're still not sure what shapes you should draw, 
take your finished colouring sheet into the room or outside, wherever you're drawing and taking inspiration from, and hold it up. As you move it around the space, do any shapes jump out at you and say, ah, that would look good over the top? Have a go. You could try this activity in lots of different rooms of your house. Then at the end, you'd be able to compare the different ways you saw each room. And there we are. One observational abstract art piece. I hope that this has shown you just how fun and easy it can be to make really beautiful artwork. And I hope that you'll join in too. If you do make your own, I would love to see it. You can either post it on social media and tag us or email photos of your art to us. I hope you've enjoyed this at home art challenge and that you'll join us for another one soon. Bye for now.